Alrighty, so I did a few more things on the Ranger. I got the flex sensor hooked up and got the tune set up for that. So I'm probably going to go drive it a little bit and just verify that everything is good and make some changes to that. When I did that though, I had like 66% flex in it. So I'm going to go to the gas station and get some like brand new E85 because there's only a little bit in the tank. But another thing I wanted to do after I did the little trans brake test after hooking it up was double check the coolant pressure. So the coolant pressure spiked to like 28 PSI. That's usually kind of high, but like I said, my yellow Mustang, the coolant pressure was always high. It was like, like 35, 38 PSI whenever I was in RPM. So I wanted to do something interesting and check coolant pressure in two different spots and compare them. So what I did was I left the head combo sensor where it was, and then I took my drain plug out of the bottom of the radiator and I got a little fitting for that. It was an M12 by 125 SO fitting with an eighth inch NPT on the end. So I jammed a sensor into the end of that guy and then I used that 15 foot cable that I had in the last video, which is actually just right here. And then I made uh, a sensor extension so I could pull off of my back pressure sensor wiring without having to change any wiring. So I ended up getting a connector and I just pinned it onto the end of that cable. So now I can use my back pressure wiring with the sensor extension and set it up in the ECU so it'll read that. This cable is also like 15 feet long, so if I wanted to add a sensor like anywhere in the vehicle, I could just steal that and hook one up just to do some testing. So I do plan to add transmission pressure, so I might end up using it for that, but let's check this out. So all I did in the tune was I disabled my back pressure and then I added coolant pressure head and coolant pressure bottom. So coolant pressure head was already there. I just changed the name to head and bottom and then changed the configuration so it was pulling off of the same one as the back pressure was. Now check this out. So we got three lines. This is the RPM line of it just idling. We got a blue line and like a burgundy line, a darker red line. These are the coolant pressure sensors. So blue is the head and then red is the tank. This one looks a little more choppy because I had the refresh rate set up at 1 hertz on this one instead of 5 hertz. So this is sampling one time per second and the blue line is sampling five times per second. So that's why this one looks a little choppy. But here's the RPM coming up. Both of them come up and peak about right here which correlates perfectly to the 160 degree thermostat that's in the truck. And then they both come down about 2 psi. So what's interesting now is you can see the tank pressure stays flat the whole time and this is flat right at 14 psi but now look at the head pressure correlates perfectly to rpm rpm spikes this comes up this isn't even a boost this is 1600 rpm right here and just going from 1000 to 600 rpm brings the pressure up 2 psi so here's another throttle blip pressure comes up and then as I'm going on the brake to get into boost, this is about two pounds of boost, it spikes and comes up to 28 pounds of coolant pressure in the head while maintaining 14 pounds of coolant pressure in the end tank. So last video, what I said I wanted to do was get a baseline. So I'll probably take it out, take, make a couple passes with it, get a baseline for what the head pressure should be, like at 7,000 RPM. Uh, and then I would be able to know, like if say it comes up to 30 PSI or 35 PSI at the head, I know that if it spikes now to 50 that I have a problem and I can verify that now with the sensor in the tank. I could just leave the sensor in the tank also, which I might do for a little while, but I, but I don't know right now if I want to burn another input to have two sensors reading the same thing, but it is kind of interesting to see that. So what I'll probably do is verify that I have a good baseline with the head sensor and then leave that one in there and then I like to use that sensor maybe for the transmission pressure. I was thinking about going to the track today, but there's some stuff I'd like to set up on the truck yet. I still gotta clean up the wiring for the CAN bus stuff and wire in the dial -a boost I like gotta mount it somewhere and there's just some stuff I wanna clean up before I go out again. So I'll double check the coolant pressure thing and try to get some RPM and boost into it and that'll probably work on the Volvo tonight uh, for the rest of the night. So. Right, so it is the next day now and I am thinking about this a little bit more and I have a theory that there's so much of a pressure difference and it rises with RPM because I'm not looping the water pump. So I just have 
the water pump blocked on both ports on the Holly mid mount has two ports on the side and two ports on the bottom. I'm not looping them. I did drill some holes like on the back side of the thermostat just so it'll circulate some fluid through there but it's not like a full loop so the Mustang that I had also had that plate blocked off so that is another thing I could test but I'm just kind of deciding if I really want to put the time into it because I'd have to take the plugs out get a loop put the loop in all that stuff I don't really know if I want to mess with it right now I kind of just want to get to working on the Volvo so I'm good with that if just understanding that you know that 30 PSI or whatever is going to be my baseline. I'll have to make a full pass and I'll probably make a full pass with both sensors on just to see what it is reading like in boost at 6800 RPM so I can get a good baseline on it. Some of this stuff is starting to make sense and I think that might be why because both the vehicles that I saw 35 PSI normally on were this one and my Mustang. Both of them had the water pumps blocked and that makes complete sense now why it's seeing 30 pounds of coolant pressure but it's not spitting any into the overflow. If the radiator is still at 14, 15 PSI, but it's just seeing 35 at the sensor in the head, that makes sense why it's not spitting anything into the overflow. So head gasket's not leaking. It is seeing the high pressure, but it's because of where it's being measured from and it's not actually overpressurizing the coolant system. One concern I have is at what point does it actually start to bleed pressure off into the tank? Because if normal is 35 and then it does spike with combustion gas to 50, at what point does it actually start to raise the pressure in the tank? That shouldn't really matter that much though, as long as you have a consistent baseline, like at 35, just as an example, and then all of a sudden it spikes to 50, you know that that's a problem because it's something new. So, so I guess coolant pressure isn't as much of a blanket statement as it seems, because I always said that my Mustang was like 30, 35 PSI, and this kind of makes sense now. Other examples of people that have been hearing their coolant pressure is like 20 to 25, but the setups are all different or they're reading in a different spot. One person I talked to said they're reading in like a water manifold block on the front. Jack Roberts said that he also blocked his water pump, but he wasn't reading coolant pressure at the time. Matt from Sloppy just did a test where he read it from the top hose and he actually did have a head gasket issue and it read like 40 PSI, but you could read it from different spots. Tank in the head, in the expansion tank, in the upper hose. So I guess in theory, good practice would be to wherever you're measuring it from, just have a baseline and understand what your baseline is. I will add, I will add, because I know there's probably going to be people that are still telling me that I have a problem. I did do the block tester. So the block tester, you can test for combustion gases, the fluid changes colors. I did do the block tester on it and there was no issue, no leak. So, so two different methods, the fluid never changed color and the bulb, when you squeeze the bulb, the bulb wasn't filling up with air. So nothing was happening there. And you can see the pressure was rising even with a little bit of a blip of throttle, like 1600 RPM, the pressure was still rising in the head. So I feel pretty confident that it's not a problem. I just have to understand what the baseline was. So if you guys have done any extensive coolant pressure testing, let me know. And what I think is really funny about the whole thing with the data and getting the data is like, once you add a sensor, now it's a problem. So like, truck's fine, everything's fine, everyone's excited, everyone's all happy, and then I add a sensor, and now everyone's like, oh, that's bad, something's wrong. <laughs> so it's like the cam bearings theory, like if you look, then it's gonna be bad. If you understand what the number is, now it's gonna be a problem. So sometimes you're better off not looking, but I put the sensor on it, and now I've been monkeying around with this thing for like two or three days just because I saw a number and wanted to mess around, so. And they call that analysis paralysis. So, and the 30 PSI in the head that I'm reading is probably not that bad of a thing because people will put like a 30 PSI cap on it because raising the pressure in the cooling system lowers the boiling point of the water that's in it. So if RPM is actually raising the pressure, it's lowering the boiling point at the same time. So it's kind of serves the same purpose as putting a 30 PSI cap on without actually putting a cap on, which might actually be better for it. But now that I'm thinking about this a bunch, I might actually have to test looping the water pump just to see how much of a difference that makes. Usually when there's conversations about coolant pressure, it's all like blanket statement, like mine is this, this is bad, this number's too high, but maybe it's not that simple. <laughs>